In that activity you perform today, you compare the time it takes for an incense stick to stop burning in a controlled environment. You placed the lit incense stick in containers with different volumes of air and noted the time taken for it to stop burning. You noticed that the incense stick burned for longer inside containers that had more air. By means of this simple experiment, you have understood that air is required for combustion. More specifically, it is the oxygen present in air that sustains combustion. We will now understand the conceptual details behind the composition of air and the process of combustion. A knowledge of these details will help us in understanding how to use various components of air for human benefit. After completing this activity at home with the help of the accompanying activity guide or at school under the supervision of your teacher, you would have noticed that the incense stick burns for a longer period of time if it is kept in a container that has more air. This is because the higher the amount of air around a burning substance, the more oxygen is available for sustaining combustion. Let us now think of some variations of this experiment and try to understand what effect these variations will have on the outcome of our experiment. We asked you to ensure that the experiment setup remains airtight. Why do you think this is important? What will happen if you allow air to enter the syringe or bottle that you used in the experiment? For testing these variations, you would have to repeat the experiment in the following ways. Remove the piston of the syringe before inserting the incense stick through the bottom. Does the stick continue to burn or does it get extinguished in a couple of minutes like before? Or instead of piercing a hole in the cap of the bottle, remove the cap and use that opening to insert the incense stick inside the bottle. What do you observe now? Combustion or burning is a very important process. Speaking in terms of chemistry, it is a reaction between the fuel, which is the reductant, and oxygen, which is the oxidant, to produce oxidized products and releasing smoke. The smoke consists of oxides of carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur. These three elements are present in the fuel and get oxidized to become a part of the smoke. Combustion results in the generation of a lot of heat and this heat makes the process self-sustaining. So this is a good example of an exothermic reaction. Combustion is among the earliest chemical reactions that were noticed by human beings in the form of forest fires. The ability to create and control combustion gave human beings power over other animals. But it was not until many centuries after that we could understand the science behind the simple process of combustion. Combustion is one of the easiest processes by which we can show the presence of oxygen in air. However, hundreds of years ago, the composition of air was still unknown. It was only in 1774 that oxygen was discovered by Swedish scientist Carl Wilhelm Scheel and English scientist Joseph Priestley. They heated many chemical compounds like manganese oxide and mercury oxide. To their utter surprise, they found that upon heating, these oxides released a gas that made candles burn with a much brighter flame. This gas was oxygen. Joseph Priestley further discovered the biological importance of oxygen by showing that a mouse could survive longer in a jar of oxygen than in a jar of air. Soon after this discovery, French scientist Antoine Laurent Lavoisier named this gas oxygen, calculated that the oxygen forms about 21% of air and that combustion is the combination of some materials with oxygen. However, you would be surprised to know that even before oxygen was identified, many scientists had already observed its properties. As early as in the 16th century, the famous painter and scientist Leonardo da Vinci had noted that some amount of air is spent in combustion. By 1665, the scientist Robert Hooke had figured out that air is formed of the same substance that is present in potassium nitrate, later confirmed to be oxygen and nitrogen. In 1668, John Mayo had concluded that a compound of air, later identified as oxygen, is required for respiration and burning. Now that you know this interesting history behind the discovery of oxygen, let us understand why oxygen in air is so important for all of us. Some scientific terms. Combustion is the process of burning something. It can also be defined as a chemical reaction of a material or substance with oxygen resulting in heat and light. 
Oxidation is the loss of electrons from a compound during a chemical reaction. Reduction is the gain of electrons from a compound during a chemical reaction. Some theory prerequisites, you need some basic understanding of the terms fuel, heat, combustion, etc. Basic understanding of the chemical processes of oxidation and reduction. And some simple motor skills like handling a pair of scissors, handling a matchbox and burning incense sticks safely. The mixture of gases that envelops the earth is known as air. The natural composition of air is about 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, about 1% argon and 0.04% carbon dioxide. In addition, it also contains variable amounts of water vapor and other trace elements and gases. This composition of air is crucial for a lot of processes, for example, for keeping the earth warm enough for life to sustain on this planet and absorbing the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun. In addition, oxygen present in the air is very important for the survival of many living organisms. The bodies of animals, including humans, have adapted themselves so that they can optimally function only when they have access to this particular composition of air, with oxygen absolutely vital. Oxygen is required not only for various life processes, but also for many chemical reactions like combustion. The alteration of air composition due to human activities like indiscriminate burning of fuels, synthesizing compounds that become part of the air, and increasing particulate matter and smoke in the atmosphere has resulted in a lot of problems like respiratory troubles, air pollution, and increase in the greenhouse effect that subsequently leads to global warming and climate change. Humans breathe in approximately 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and a very minute amount of other gases. Scientists have calculated that humans require an oxygen concentration between 19.5% and 23.5%. In case of oxygen concentration dropping below 19.5%, the brain starts functioning slower and various body functions get compromised. The effective concentration of atmospheric oxygen is much lower at higher altitudes, for example at hill stations. This decrease in the amount of oxygen you can breathe for each inhalation causes altitude sickness that is characterized by nausea and vomiting. This is the body's response to lower amounts of oxygen. Humans cannot survive at oxygen levels below 6%. An increase in the concentration of oxygen in air will lead to a risk of spontaneous explosion or uncontrolled combustion. Also, a drastic increase of oxygen levels in air will result in the generation of oxidizing compounds known as free radicals that attack body tissues and cause irreversible damage. The most vital implication of atmospheric oxygen is its role in combustion. Since combustion has become a major part of our lives, it is important to know the ways in which we can control and also stop combustion. There are three vital components in a combustion reaction. The fuel, which is the substance that burns, air, which has the oxygen, and heat to begin the reaction and to sustain it. The absence or removal of any of these components will result in the extinguishing of the flame and combustion will stop. By controlling the supply of these three components, it is possible to get the desired scale and intensity of combustion and to use it for various applications. The fuel, which is typically a compound, a substance that is used as a fuel, contains a high amount of hydrogen and carbon. Fuels can be solid, for example, coal, liquid, for example, petrol, diesel, kerosene, etc., or gaseous, for example, methane, LPG, etc. Air. The minimum amount of air required to completely burn a given amount of fuel is known as stoichiometric air or theoretical air. The remaining amount of air is known as excess air. And heat. Most combustion reactions require an external source of heat that provides the energy to start the reaction. Once started, this reaction is self-sustained until one of the three factors become limiting. Oxygen is a very important element, not only for life processes, but also for various industrial applications. A very important use of oxygen is for making steel. Steel manufacturers also increase the purity of steel and remove carbon impurities from steel by reacting them with oxygen, a process that results in release of carbon dioxide. 
Pure oxygen is used for maintaining regular breathing in patients with certain respiratory disorders. It is also used for treating carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide poisoning in humans. In general, it is vital for hospitals and medical facilities to have oxygen available to their patients. Animals need oxygen for a variety of their bodily functions like respiration, digestion, etc. This is because oxygen is required for activation of many enzymes. It is only because of our understanding of the process of combustion and the role of oxygen in combustion that engines have been invented. These engines work by combustion of fuel. Without engines, transportation and many industrial processes would not be possible. Oxygen is used in rocket fuel to facilitate its combustion and result in rapid propulsion. Oxygen is used in welding metals and cutting metals. Oxygen is also used for wastewater management. Wastewater is highly deficient in dissolved oxygen and this has an adverse effect on aquatic organisms. When oxygen is bubbled through wastewater, these organisms survive and this wastewater can then be used for other applications. By performing this simple activity, we hope that you were able to understand that the composition of air plays a vital role for a lot of processes. For example, oxygen present in air is required for combustion and for various life processes like respiration and digestion. Alteration in the composition of air will have deleterious effects. So as invisible as air might be, oxygen and nitrogen concentrations as well as the carbon dioxide concentration are just right for life to thrive on earth. We should appreciate and cherish this lovely natural balance, one of the many miracles of life on this wonderful planet. Goodbye.